Hello and welcome to Delaney Studios YouTube channel. Today we'll be learning how to draw and watercolour this lovely little hummingbird, um, almost landing on a little flower. We're going to be using two different techniques today. So we're going to use wet on dry watercolour technique and wet on wet. The wet on wet is this lovely sort of faded look and wet on dry is where it's a little bit more um, in tune and fine detail like on the eye and the beak. So we'll be using two different techniques. So tools you will need today, 2B pencil, normal eraser, kneadable rubber or a piece of blue tack, a couple of brushes. I've got a size zero, a size two and a size four round tip. Depends on the size of your paper, you might need to go bigger than that. And I've got a selection of watercolor reels. These are dry watercolors and they're activated using water. These are the brilliant set from Koenor. And you can get these from Officeworks or Eckersley's uh, or online. Um, these ones are the Brilliant Pack. So they're very, very bright when you use them. That's how I got this really bright tone. So I'm going to get set up and let's get ready to begin. Okay, so I've got my new piece of paper and this time it's going to be Landscape. And most importantly, make sure you've got either a tablecloth down or a bit of newspaper or paper towel like I've got. Have a piece of paper towel handy on the side as well to wipe your brushes off and of course have a pot of water ready to go. So what we're going to do first is draw up our artwork. So I'm going to plan out where my flower is going to go and where my bird is going to go. You can do guidelines if you want to. I'm going to go straight into breaking it down into shapes because I know I'll have enough space. So the flower belongs on the left and I'm going to do just a nice soft circle using 2B pencil. I'll break down the petals in a sec. And then I'm going to have a couple of leaves coming out of that. So I really need to get the petals in first. So what I want you to do is do a little center circle, the center of the flower. And I'm just going to do simple curved lines coming out. You can do as many petals as you like. We're going to refine this later. It's not the finished shape. So I've done five lines coming out. You can do more if you want to. Then I'm going to just curve my petals. Curving the tops. Now you can take your time to get rid of the original circle. So that was just for planning. So I would keep it really light. We'll be using kneadable rubber or blue tack to go over the top to lighten that pencil out. Now we can add the leaves in. There's a few leaves here. There's a skinny pointy one on the left. Bit of a curvy one here. You can put them anywhere you like. You don't have to copy exactly the same. We can put a center line in. Doesn't have to be for all of them. This one's too skinny to do it. And that's our flower done. So our bird's beak is gonna overlap this little part of our leaf. So it looks like it's going towards the flower and it's going to fit in this space here. So what we need to do is break it down into shapes. So I want my head to be roughly here. So again, break it down into shapes, little circle. Body is very much an oval. Very close, not quite touching though. And my wings are going to spread outwards this way. My tail comes down. So the next step we do is joining the shapes together. So we've broken it down into circles, like most animals are made up of circles. Now we come into joining the head to the body. Head to the body. And 
and then we're going to add the tail in. The tail comes off the body, a little bit of a curve. Doesn't have to be perfect, so we're only in planning stage. And then we can do two curves for two main feathers. Okay, now we can come in with our normal eraser and let's get rid of the internal lines. Today I'm using watercolour paper. You can use thick paper or watercolour paper or even acrylic paper works really well with this. Normal printer paper doesn't work as well, okay, because it's just a little bit too thin. So just a heads up, the thicker the paper you use for watercolour, the better it looks. So we've got a very funny looking shape here. So I'm going to just very roughly plan my wings. I'm not going to draw each one in. I'm just going to draw a top line for each. Just so I know where to flick out from with my brush. I can also fix up this shape for the belly. It's actually more almost diamond shaped. And it's got a center line through the middle. And it's got little gray circles at the end of the tail. And you can change this shape of the head at any time. So I'll probably come in and refine it a little bit more um, just as I'm getting used to what shape I need. With the beak, I'm going to curve it upwards and bring it back to the face. And bring it inside the face. You're not going to see a lot of this detail because a lot of it's really black. And you can take your normal eraser and get rid of that headline. Clean up any lines that you don't quite like. And this beak, of course, is halved. And then there's a little nostril. So I probably like to curve my head a little bit more, have a bit more definition here. So I might just lighten that up with my needle ball so I can still see it. I'd like it a little bit more of a shape of a neck there. Now we can do the eye when you're happy. The eye is a little happy mouth and then a little sad mouth on top. So it's a real almond shape. And there's a circle on the inside for a pupil and another circle for a shine. So happy mouth, sad mouth, circle, circle. A lot of that will get hidden in some of the details. Okay, so when we've reached this point, what we're going to do is lighten up all of our lead using your needable or your blue tack. Watercolour paper tends to be very smudgy with 2B pencil as well, so it's really nice to use this just to clean up any smudgy bits. So I can still see my lines, but they're a lot lighter. Okay, I'm going to start with some of my wishy-washy background around my flower first. So this is where wet on wet technique comes in. So I'm going to use my number four brush, the larger one, and I'm actually going to come in and just use water by itself to wet the page. Wet on wet technique is wet paper with wet watercolour. You can choose how far you want it to come out. If you're like, oh, I can't tell what I've done, move it on an angle and you'll see the shininess is where you've done it too. It'd be hard to see water on white paper. All we're doing is building up a pretty background. And it's not everywhere. You can put it wherever you like. But the good thing with wet on wet technique is the watercolour only goes where you've put water that won't venture out of that area. I'm 
the more water you add, the better. You can even add it back in here. It's starting to dry out a little bit. The only thing is you've got to make sure if you go to do the flower and the leaves that the background's dry first, otherwise it'll just bleed or just melt into your background. So I've got some wet areas there. Now you can decide the colours you're going to use for this one. So I'm going to use greens and pinks. Um, you can use any colours you like, totally up to you. I'll activate a little bit of my green. With the uh, brilliance, the Kohenor brilliance, you really don't need a lot. It's like really inky, so it's quite bright. And if you want it to look like it's disappearing, what you can do is use your little bit of paper towel. Just be aware there are patterns on the paper towel and you don't want to see the patterns. So lots of dabbing is really good for that. So see how it looks like it's disappearing. Add a bit more green here. You can add multiple greens. It doesn't have to be the one green. Wash your brush, just add water by itself to pull it right out. And you can dab it away, looking like it's disappearing into nothing. And leave room here for pink. Do a little bit more green up here. Multiple dabs because you don't want to get the pattern of the paper towel. The brush a good wash. And now I'm going to add some pinks in. With the Brilliant set, if you're lucky enough to have a set, you may want to test out the colours. You can do that on your paper towel. See whether you like the colour. This one I like the colour, it's pretty. So you can see it's sort of spreading out like a little firework because it's wet. So that's wet on wet technique for you. One of my favourite watercolour techniques. And if you want to layer up the colour as well to make it look bolder, closer to the flower, you can do that in layers. That's the great thing about watercolour. Washing my brush, just adding water by itself to pull it right out. Again, you can dab this if you want to. And don't worry if you get it in the flower, no big deal. You can dab it straight up if it's really wet, otherwise just leave it, it's fine. We're not meant to be perfect. Washing my brush just with water by itself. Wash the brush, just water by itself. Let's absorb that little puddle. If you leave any puddles, it just takes forever to dry, that's all. If you've got a hairdryer, you can speed up the dry time, but just be really careful you don't hold it, the hairdryer too close because uh, you don't want it to go blast off up your page. I'm not going to do any in this area here. The example picture doesn't have any there, so I'm going to leave that. And I'm not going to do any in between uh, this and the bird, so I will leave that space. So what I'm going to do now is leave this to dry a bit, then I'll come back and do more in the flower, um, and then I can come into um, I might do the bird first. So 
again it's going to be wet on wet technique so what I'm going to do is get my size 4 brush again and I'm going to wet just the body of the hummingbird I want to go around the eye if you accidentally go in the eye just stop and dry it with your paper towel and then keep going I'm just doing the body not the tail not the wings not the beak just the body and the head again put your head on a bit of a tilt if you need to see what you have and haven't done you'll see it's shiny you can choose the colors um, for your hummingbird totally up to you I'm loving these pinks so I'm going to stick with pinks and blues and maybe create a bit of a purple tone in there because while it's wet it mixes really well you could do any colors you want getting a bit of blue you can see as I'm coming over my pink areas it's turning a little bit purple looking at different blues this is it's a different blue more purpley blue Just with a damp brush you can come through and blend it a little bit more you wash and clean your brush to give it a little bit of a dab to dry off can add more color make it a bit more vivid There is black on this face, so I'm not going too overboard. Lovely pink belly. Kind of want it to go a bit purple too, which is happening down the bottom there. If you've got salt you can also sprinkle some salt on it if um, you're interested in doing the salt technique I'm not going to today so I feel like pretty enough with its little colors like that so I'm going to move on to do the wings now so you don't have to have the body being perfectly dry for that so the wings I'm going to do in different blues I'm going to activate this little blue here it does definitely doesn't look blue in the image but when you paint it, it's beautiful and bright. I'm trying to create the illusion of feathers moving. So they're not perfectly painted. They do flick out towards the end. And they get a bit shorter as they come down closer to the body. We can introduce different blues. You can see the wet on wet techniques really lovely at just blending in these little tiny fireworks going off. We want to separate out those wings and just going over it with that darker blue. Okay, so I'm going to leave this to dry off just a little bit. Um, I'm getting a little bit of bleeding happening. You can stop that if you dab it with um, paper towel. But you can always come back over it and define it because um, the example picture has the same bleeding so I'm not too worried about that 
I will be adding a little bit of black into the head maybe in a minute or so it's just a little bit too wet right now if we add black it's going to bleed out into the rest of the head, which is not what we want. We wanted a little bit more controlled. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do some of my flowers. So that's wet on wet technique as well. So all I'm going to do is wet near the center and the middle of the flowers. I'm not going to the edges. I'm going to pick slightly different pinky tone, I might do a few, few reds and pinks. And you can do different color flowers if you'd like, that's totally fine. Letting it bleed out, washing my brush, just water on my brush, nothing else. You can blend that out. Just water by itself. You just don't want it to be perfect. And I might do a little bit of purple in the center. It's water by itself to just get it to blend out a little. You can add more or take some away. I like leaving a little bit of a white edge on the flower, just keeps it a bit more interesting. Now I am going to go and dry this because um, I want to move on to my leaves next and um, some of the detail in the head, but it's just a little bit too wet to do that yet. So I'll come back when it's dry. Okay, so I focused um, my hair dry just on my flower. So my bird is still a little bit damp. So this is where I want to add a little bit of black into my bird. So I've got a smaller brush. This is my size zero and I'm going to use a little bit of black. And I am going to add a little bit of a band around my eye. And it's fine if it doesn't blend because I'll show you how to blend it even if your head is a little dry. really slowly around that eye. on the back of the head. Wash your brush. Just with water on the brush I'm going to just run it along these harsh edges because I don't want any hard edges. Wash your brush again damp brush, not dripping wet. Just activate those little edges. And what that does is just build up a little bit of shadow without taking away too much of that pretty colour. There's a tiny bit 
flap down the bottom here. So see how there's a really hard edge there? Stop, wash your brush, dab it off. Then just work that edge with a wet brush, just damp brush, not dripping. And that just activates those edges so you don't get hard edges. Okay, while we're here, we may as well do the bottom part of the beak. Bottom part of the beak is completely black and then the top part of the beak is actually grey, so we'll come back to that later. So whatever smallest brush you have is the go. And don't do the black in the eye yet because we need a colour in the eye first. If you do the black first and um, add the colour, the colour will just blend um, straight into the black and just turn black and that's not what we want. While we've got the black going, let's do the tail. Then we'll let all that dry and we can come back to that and then we'll do our flower and our leaves next. The original artist did leave a little gap between the feathers. But if you didn't, don't worry. These little dots will get filled in with grey, so I purposely am not outlining them. left a little bit of a gap in there. So you can also add more streaks in for your feathers if you feel like you lost the feathers a little bit, or they bled a little bit too much. You can pop some of those lines back in. Okay, we can get into the leaves now of the, from the flower. So I'm using my size two brush, so the medium size one, just to get into these. And these will be wet on dry, so we don't actually don't need to wet them. So I'm going to use a couple of different greens. I'm gonna use a lighter green on one side, maybe add some yellow into it as well. And then a darker green on the other side of each half of the leaves. So what I'll do first is activate a light green. Just paint straight in, don't wet it. So wet watercolour on dry paper. Make it even more interesting, you can activate a yellow. Add a bit of yellow over the top. You can use lots of different greens for this.
and emphasize that center line. And keep it lighter in the center of each half, which is quite interesting. yellow on this half first and then I'll add some green over the top. So have a play. If it doesn't work out, just use your paper towel and blot it back up again. It's getting too puddly, don't forget. You do have your bit of paper towel. And you can rework stuff. And just water by itself and a clean brush. Last one, start with yellow again. Green on the other half and then we'll blend. So I'm using all of the greens on the palette. If you're advanced, you can add some browns in there too. If you want it to look a bit more realistic, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to keep it nice and fresh. Cleaning my brush just with a clean damp brush, you can do your blend. That's your leaves done. If you want to add any extra detail into your flower, you can certainly do that as well. A 
few more strokes of pink, a little bit more purple to the center, just so it bleeds out a little bit, looks a bit more interesting. This also has given our time, us time for the tail to dry out, so we can come in with some gray. So I'm going to use my size two brush, activate some gray. If you don't have gray, you can just make black and white. We can also use that grey to do the top part of the beak to be sure that um, you use your smallest brush. I'll go back to my size zero. If you've got a double zero, even better. This is the bit you want to do really slowly. And I pick a colour for my eye. The example picture has it as orange. And of course the shine in the eye will stay white, but I just want to give that colour time to dry before I do the black because you don't want it to bleed in. A bit more purple to that centre. Just do a double check that that eye is dry. A bit of paper towel. That's dry. And the top of the beak is also dry. You can do that with your finger as well. So we just need a bit of black on our tiny brush. If you accidentally go over the shine, don't worry because you can get normal acrylic paint or even um, a white watercolor doesn't work so well, but you can use um, white pen or Posca. I'm going to outline. If you're too worried about outlining and filling in that black section of the eye, you can use a pen. A little nostril. And then, of course, we get our 2B pencil back and we're going to sign it. Or you can use a pen and pop the year on it. And that's your beautiful watercolour hummingbird complete. Well done, guys. I'll see you for the next lesson.